Hello, Hollywood Times viewers, Judy Shields here. Today we are so excited. I am so excited to welcome award-winning chef, best-selling author, and renowned educator, George Gary. Hi, George. Hi, how are you? Cool. I love those blue glasses you got on. Oh, see? Yeah, we, we uh, change it to whatever you're wearing, which is kind of nice. Oh, yeah. cool. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> so how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah. Busy. Busy. Yeah. Busy for Friday. And I bet you, you, you must have the most amazing Thanksgiving dinners any of us can think of. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, we're going to a restaurant. <laughs> no, it's really funny with Thanksgiving. Um, my mom doesn't cook anymore because she's got me. And <laughs> my house is too far. I have taken everything over to the, the family house. And then my sisters don't cook because what you know, I, I'm I do it all, it seems. And I'm exhausted by the time we get the holiday because I do so many morning shows and different um sometimes even on Friday I do a, a show and uh on stations and, and one show I did was what to do with all the leftovers. Oh. Know, how how to do things. And then um so I'm kind of uh, tired, and by the time Thanksgiving comes around, uh, I'm gearing up for the holidays, and um, I might go on vacation for a week or two. So my goodness! Well, folks, we're here to talk about this book. Maybe oh, it's coming out! Wow, there you go. This is an amazing book. LA's landmark restaurants, and first of all, like of all the restaurants, why did you pick this one to be on your cover? My favorite. Uh, you know, uh, covers are not something I get to choose. It's the okay. publisher. Got it. And they look at what is colorful. That I saw that as the fifth or sixth cover we were looking at. And when that one came out, we had I had to go out there personally and shoot the cover again. Oh. Because the pictures we had had all of the wiring from the city going through the signage and all sorts of things. So I had to go out there and uh, do it uh, myself. And I just, uh, I love Felipe's and the family that owns it. They're so nice. And um, they'll be at some of my book signings and I don't realize that they're relatives of them and things like that. So it, it's uh, uh, just, a. have been going there since... I was a kid and it hasn't changed. So that's why it got the cover. Almost um, a do uh, 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 the hot dog place with the, that looks like hot dog in West Hollywood. They almost got it. But then the pictures that uh, we were going to use uh, were um, too expensive. Oh. And um, that's another thing, the rights to pictures people think that's why we didn't have to pay for rights on this one because i went out and shot this one so that's no that makes come. sense because i know yeah. this book it's different than your last because uh i love what you've done with this one because you open it up the very first page here folks is black and white and color there's nothing like black and white the different restaurants and how they made it but this one i what's so great about it folks is that he talks about these restaurants, the history. There's nothing like history. And then you also talk about like when it opened and the locations and all the different ones. And that's amazing. How did you do all that research, George? I spent a lot of time at uh, the LA Public Library. Really? Um, the uh, the one downtown has a lot of information and uh, menu collections. I even go to the city building records and wow. learn when they got um, occupancy a lot of places that are still open, they don't know their history. So I've given them their history in a lot of ways because they didn't know the exact date that they opened or they didn't know. I did have one that didn't realize that he has an adopted sister somewhere. So I, you know, we we get a little uh, family uh, dirt history and some of this <laughs> stuff, but I didn't write about it. A bit. But if you go to any of my live shows that I do a... a I kind of touch on that, but uh, there are some uh, skeletons in closets in these big companies or these big uh, family owned restaurants, just like any restaurant. I can imagine. So, so some of these pictures 
you're able to use? Do you get permission from the families or they're not copyrighted? They give them to me. Okay. In a lot of ways. Okay. Same thing with the, the recipes. I see there's recipes. How do you get the recipes from the owners? Recipes. Uh, some come from, oh, defunct cookbooks that they've been in. Uh, they've all been reworked for today's audience. Okay. Um, I had some that had a lot of uh, MSG in them. Um, celery salt, which was a strange thing. Why celery salt? Uh, <laughs> There were a few restaurants that wouldn't give me recipes or they didn't have them or they were so bad that they couldn't be published. So I had to create recipes for them. So you did. did? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So all of them, they all work and everything. Yep. Yeah. Got yeah. it. So uh, the one I said about uh, the adopted uh, sister that he didn't know he had, um, they gave me a recipe and it was uh, very strange. It was a, a recipe. I won't tell you what the recipe was because you'll figure out the family. Um, <laughs> it was, um, let's say they said 25, uh, a 20 pound, five pound box of tomatoes. Okay. And five bunches of this. And, th and I thought, oh, you know, they don't have to give me the recipe that, is uh for home use but they could give me a little bit tighter so instead of just bunches and stuff yeah so it was more like your grandmother's recipes from 1925 is how they were writing them out to me is there any re uh, recipes in your book this new book that is the actual recipe from the oh, yeah. Most, yeah. most of them are okay yeah yeah in fact glancing um like canters they gave me their pickle recipe oh and canters put it down I didn't know they had a um, a pickle room. They do? Yeah. Well, what? we don't see it. It's underneath. Because that used to be a theater years ago in the 30s and 40s. And uh, they make their own pickles. They're about the only Jewish deli in town. They are the only, that I know of that makes their own pickles. And they pickle them. And they've got big, big barrels down below. They go through about 55 gallons per week. That's and why they're so good. Yeah. I mean, they, they do have the best pickles. They, they do. Uh, I could just sit there and have, you know, something to drink and the pickles and maybe, you know, a piece of bread. And that's all I need over at Cantor's. But yeah, they, they're really good. Now, see, there's some places that are completely closed down that are in the book, about 10%. Like Little Joe's was an Italian restaurant um, from the 1890s that started. And I found the family and they gave me the recipe book to uh, use anything I wanted. Oh, and uh, no. Little Joe's, yeah, that started in 1897. And I found that Little Joe was arrested when he was about 30 and put in jail because of prohibition. And he had so much alcohol in the basement of his house. And I told the ancestors this and they said, oh, that is just exactly how we thought Little <laughs> Joe would be, you know. <laughs> So they were fine with me writing about that, but uh, I would go through the families with some of the stories to make sure I wouldn't uh, kind of, you know, it's, it, I know it's all public record out there, but yeah. I don't want to uh, write about it if it's going to uh, not be a, a, a good experience for the family. <laughs> yeah. So you must have had, it must have been some emotional stuff to go through uh, creating this this book because of the history. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was one place uh, I found out that one of the son brothers had been arrested for tax evasion, but you never know what happened afterwards, you know. So I asked the the brother that uh, owns the restaurant now, and I said, so what happened? And he just looked at me with a stark face. He says, we have lawyers. And like, oh, okay. Okay, they got lawyers. That's what happened. So I don't really know if the guy got out fast or or what or they still had to pay or what but it was kind of funny when he said we have lawyers so i knew to stop with the questioning <laughs> so how long did it take you for all the research and everything to put this book together what what was it um see this book is the sequel to the other book la uh, legendary restaurants and that one was going to be mostly all closed restaurants, 20s and 30s, and star-driven. This one has some star-driven in it. And it took me 
I'd say less than a year to do it because we were kind of in the middle of the end of the major part of COVID when I got the the job on it. And I was juggling another book that was coming out. So it's kind of hard uh, when you're juggling other books in your regular uh, life also. Let me tell you, folks, this is a page turn. This is the most amazing book to A Christmas is Coming. This is a great book to get for for everyone because you can do it. Who doesn't like history? There's so many of people that live in LA that you're going to read this book and go, no way, really? And I remember that. And, you know, so this is, I think it's one of the best Christmas gifts we, people can give right now. It's It sparks a lot of memories, which I think is fun. Yeah. Because I started doing these historical books. One reason is we tear down so much the buildings, yes. the locations that these places were at. And um, and we all remember, you know, there's one restaurant that um, on Sunset Boulevard that somebody was telling me they had their 16th birthday. It's gone. And that's what you, you kind of, you know, you want to go back to these places that are gone and uh, the history. And it's great that we do still have like Moose and Franks and uh, Michelli's and, and things like that. But like the pig and whistle is gone again. It was back and now it's gone. So, yeah, I I was um, not born in Los Angeles. I was out in the IE and I came to Los Angeles for the first, you know, I could come as a kid, but I started working in downtown LA in 1982. So that's mm. my first knowing of that. And one of the first places I went to in the downtown area was Clifton's. And I just, you know, had, it's been a great place to go, you know, to, uh, to eat and stuff like that smorgasbord type, type of place, you know, yeah, you pick out whatever you want and, yeah. and the, you have to have lime jello with your grandmother. That's right. what a lot of people would do. <laughs> um, and I really think I could probably write a book on business uh, after yeah, all no these, <laughs> because Clifton's, um, you know, they closed it down. Yes redid it their executive chef quit the first week when they reopened they reopened with the pricing that was that of higher end food mm -hmm. um got rid of jello you yes. don't get I, mean, I don't eat jello but you don't get rid of it yes because that's the history yeah. uh because i did go there and eat like the first month it was open yeah. it, they reopened and it didn't work yeah i think i haven't and, gone back Sorry to say. It's a nightclub. Yeah. It was open sometimes. You'll yeah. drive down Broadway there and you'll see, oh, there's a line. Oh, they're open now. And then one one level is going to be a tiki place. You know, it, it just. It's sad. I, you, you stay with what you had if you're yeah. going to buy it. You exactly. Know, it just, we don't change too much. And then so. we, we had the, I went, uh. I was dating a, a lawyer at the time and we, I got to go to the Pacific dining car for the first time. <laughs> and that was, and now I've talked about, uh, they almost had a hundred years. The family says that they're going to reopen. I don't think they will. And yeah. the reason why I don't think they are is because they sold off everything. They even yeah. sold off the big cows that were part of their sign. Yeah. It was the only place that was open 24 hours. They had five or six different menus for the day. And yeah. um, and the the wait staff was stodgy old men that you know <laughs> they weren't trying to be actors over at Paramount you know they were the yes. same ones that probably worked the daytime shift over at the pantry yeah and so <laughs> it was that same, you know it, it, there's two types of waiters I think uh, there's the ones that are waiters or wait you know wait staff right or there's ones that are just there so they can go on job. Uh, for the television and movie industry, and that's about it. But those were the ones. Yeah, they they were very. Uh, I was there um, Valentine's Day before they closed, and they closed right when COVID hit. So it was about oh, two weeks. Later. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I would have known. Is... Would have stolen some of the like plates and stuff that <laughs> name. Right. Oh, that's what I have in my book. Is I have you know matchbooks, pictures, yeah. and plates. You, see, you and, see all that for that. Yeah. When I do a talk, I have a table sometimes of all this memorabilia stuff. And uh, it's really kind of fascinating. But yeah, mm. the dining car. They had good steaks too. And their cream corn. Oh, the yeah, cream I'm corn. <laughs> we could go on that lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> 
So George, like how old were you? Um, two, two questions. Like how old were you when you first learned to cook? And then what was like the first restaurant you remember going to as a kid? Oh, um, how old was I when I learned to cook? Um, well, yeah. I went to culinary school, but okay. before I had, I, um, I always, I liked making French toast in the morning, you know? Okay. So uh, for the Sunday morning, my sister, I'd, I'd cook for her a lot. Uh, that type of thing, breakfast stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I think my parents thought I was going to be a short order cook because. <laughs> <laughs> and with uh, French toast, I would use um, on the bottom of the skillet. I didn't know anything about it. I knew how you made it, but I didn't know why butter yeah. would brown. And I liked the browning of the butter. It would make it crustier. So I would cook the butter first in the skillet to get it like foaming almost yeah. and then i would add the the battered bread to it so it would be really crunchy but anyway um the first restaurant i don't know the name of it but i remember i my eyes i was probably about seven or eight years old and my eyes got really large uh we went to go visit some friends that were staying at a hotel at lax and it was their high-end restaurant in that that uh hotel and it was the first time I saw a charger plate because I, it was really neat, beautiful plate. And they took it away from me. And I thought, well, aren't, and why do I have a plate on the table already? You know, it was as a kid, your thing. And I knew not to ask too much and to keep my hands down and to be nice. And um, I remember I ordered a ground round steak because I didn't I didn't know what steaks were and I and that was like the cheapest and I said and my mom said it's kind of like hamburger without the bun I thought well okay I'll eat that it was had mushrooms on top and I thought that was the most cool thing <laughs> a plate they took away from me I oh and then the salad fork getting refrigerated I thought wow. you know the little things as a kid you think of and you think wow the salad fork it's cold. Why? I mean, you ask yourself why, yeah. but then it, you didn't ask the question to the waiter, like, why is it cold? But you just <laughs> went with the flow. And so that was like the first place because my mom cooked. Yeah. We didn't go out to restaurants and we didn't do fast food. I don't think I had uh, McDonald's until I was probably in high school. Yeah, that's about right. You know, because you just, your parents, our, my parents, you know, my mom cooked and and so, yeah, we, it was a treat if we would go, I think we started when I was probably eight or nine, we would, they took us to like our first Bob's big boy. And I was like, oh, wow. wow. You know, and, and to get this hamburger that looked like, why is it so much bigger than mom makes? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why is Bob doing it better? Yeah. Um, yeah we, the only place, the fast foodish type of thing that um, we would do is Kentucky fried chicken and oh. you get the whole barrel and then, you know, the mashed potatoes on the side. Yeah. And it was the whole family kit. And that seemed more healthy than fast food yeah. as a kid, I think, or to mom, you know, even though that fried chicken probably was just 10 <laughs> times than a hamburger. But <laughs> oh my God, that's okay. that was the restaurant I remember. And I, it, it was at one of the hotels. So, yeah. And what is what what was culinary school like for you when you went? Well, I went. um back when I went, there wasn't all these culinary schools that sprung up in uh, the two thousands and then lost yeah. uh, momentum. And there was only one, really, there were two, okay. um, you could go to the CIA in New York, um, California culinary in San Francisco had been going on for a little while. Um, but then LA trade tech had one. So I went downtown to LA and it was eye opening in a lot of ways because I I knew I wasn't going to go away to college because it was just culinary school. And I um, I went to a primarily all Asian high school. And then I switched to L.A. Trade Tech that was mostly um, uh, African-American and Mexican or Latino. And I was the only white kid in both. And it was kind of interesting because it was like, I realized in that culinary program that the kids were there to eat, not to learn. They needed a meal. Oh. Uh, when when I when I went there back in uh, 1979, 1980, and it was really sad because it, you you saw 
Oh. We're learning, but they are, and the teacher wasn't very involved because of that back then. But um, their program has gotten really good in the past 20 years. I, I've gone and done uh, speaking engagements over there and stuff. So, but that's where I went. And then I went to LA, the California Culinary for uh, more and continuing education. UCLA used to have a lot of culinary um, continuing education back in the 80s and 90s. So I, I'm still. I went to Penn State too. Come to think of it, um, wow. I forgot about Penn State. Um, I took their um, uh, frozen ice cream uh, program, and it was in the. It's the same program that Ben and Jerry went and took it for. It's about a week and a half, and you are freezing your you know what's off <laughs> because it's in January every year, and you're out there uh, learning all about all the way from the cow to the cone everything and because uh, i thought you know what I, I really love continuing education in food no matter what it is and you're constantly learning so i thought hey uh, and penn state was difficult to get into it took about three years wow and then because their program is so everybody wants to go to it i don't know why but um and then when you get there, it's really kind of funny. You're there and you're you're the first day and you have to read the manuals and stuff way ahead. And it's like three inches thick that they send you. And the guy says, uh, I just want you all to know to look around because half of you won't be here by the end of the week. Well, those half, he explains later on, it's just a little hobby for them. Oh, that was like people that just thought, it wasn't a serious thing. I'm just going to eat ice cream all day. And that's about half of the people left. So. Wow. So I, I know all about ice cream. <laughs> oh, wow. I have to come over. <laughs> I love ice cream. <laughs> oh boy. So, oh so that's mostly the main part of the education. And then um, I, I got teaching credentials years back. So, cause I started teaching in, uh, um, community colleges and then private schools and stuff. Nice. So which I still do. I just got back from uh, North Dakota. Wow. That a group of schools wanted me up there and I didn't even know there was a group of schools. And um, that was interesting. One school in one day, we sold over a hundred of my books and th they have nothing to do in North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> and is it, uh, what is it college or that you teach or is it no, high school? They, what is it? Those were all in um, kind of like William Sonoma type places. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Yep. But I do teach at Purdue in Indiana a couple times a year. Oh, so now you're a Indiana. busy man. <laughs> yep. So when you went to culinary school, what what has been the hardest recipe for you to create? Is that is that the right terminology? Oh, the hardest type of recipe. Um, I don't know comes pretty easy for me yeah well is there anything that you just like it just didn't happen and it took a while because i've even i've created recipes and stuff for corporations and restaurants nice. and things like that and um sometimes the flavors in different things uh baking is supposedly harder but it's easier for me it is harder for for a lot of people they use your other side of the brain everyone says um mm -hmm. because it's all science versus um, just putting a sauce on top. Okay, got it. And that's why a lot of chefs don't get along with the pastry chef. <laughs> I always say it's because the pastry chef, um, everyone remembers the pastry, but they forgot what they ate earlier is <laughs> one thing. <laughs> and if a pastry burns or, or does something crazy, you can't serve it. But if uh, something happens in the kitchen, you can call it blackened fish and you can uh, put sauce on top. So, but I, I normally have gotten along with all the, the chefs that I've worked with. So, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. You know, I just recently, we had a, a, an early Thanksgiving potluck that we did and I, I like to cook uh, or bake uh, sweet potato pies and more. This mm. last one I made, was amazing it was they ate it all and wanted more and I was like ah, oh, I did such a good job I like to bake <laughs> that's good yeah yeah so so how's the book tour going are you doing a book signing tour for your book yeah in fact tomorrow I'm in Santa Monica oh, at nice. the library they were doing an event um I've been really busy on I didn't realize when I started doing historical books it's a completely different group of people I mean I've done um uh, a lot of libraries, 
lot of historical places. Um, I I found historical people I didn't even know about, um, like the Art Deco Society. Wow. I didn't have them uh, on the last the last historical book. Um, a lot of hi historical groups will nice. have me come and talk, which is really kind of nice. I get to know because uh, I love history and I love uh, preservation. So I do a lot with the preservation uh, groups around and things like that. Hollywood Heritage, I did a talk uh, with the first book with them. And uh, it was funny because I guess when they do things over at the barn, they um, will sell tickets and they have people come in. There's always tickets available. Well, I guess I sold out and people were coming in for tickets. Well, they didn't want to turn anyone away. So they were pulling chairs out of offices to have people sit. <laughs> to, 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 plus, everyone was getting a hot food Sunday afterwards from uh, Lowry's donated uh, CC wow. Brown hot food sauce. So, and I had, uh, if you know Charles Phoenix, he was scooping the ice cream for me. So we uh, had uh, a, a good time that night. So, sounds like it. Who doesn't like a hot fudge Sunday? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I, I also read here that you worked with the, uh, you were a pastry chef for the Walt Disney Company. Mm -hmm. So yeah. where, where exactly, which. Yeah, in fact, East Coast, uh, West Coast? <laughs> next, I believe, yeah, this next week is my anniversary of getting fired. <laughs> Sorry. My mom, you were not fired. They uh, just uh, got rid of the pastry kitchen two weeks before Christmas. They told oh. us on Monday before Thanksgiving, they said, we're going to uh, get rid of the whole kitchen and buy frozen. And oh. uh, then about eight years later, they that was in 1993. So it's a big anniversary year this year. Oh. And um, I, I'm not bitter. But oh. uh, what was really great is I was doing a talk in Orange County and um, nine of the people that I worked with, two supervisors, they all came. And it's been 30 years. And what's really strange about Disney is no matter what, if you've worked there for at least one season, you're stuck with them as family. I because know. you, I mean, the one gal passed away and I went to the memorial and there was, there was supervisors and I told them how I felt about things and they thought it was funny. And I told them secrets that they should have known about. And then they kind of thought that things were happening, you know, relationships. <laughs> yeah. so, you can talk 30 years later, they can't uh, get you. And exactly. you don't work anymore. But, um, but that's, it, you know, I was at Disneyland, oh, excuse me, Disneyland. Um, I was theme park operations. So I was the pastry chef and I was nice. the first award-winning chef for them. I think I have my medal around here somewhere in my office. <laughs> oh, congratulations. There you go. That's some memories. I, I worked the there from 2001 to 2004. So I, the so, mouse was my boss. Yeah. What, where did you work at? I was called a super pin trader. I traded pins with the, the guest. Oh, okay. So okay. in the stores. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got some pins from back in the day. If you'd like I them. have so many. <laughs> yes. We'll have to talk. And what can you do with them all? No, we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. So, so George uh, quickly let, let us know your uh, social media for we oh um instagram is uh chef gary okay g-e-a-r-y uh, e uh website is georgegary.com so all one word okay and uh, and i do um i post on there in the blog part of it um all the recipes for the morning shows that i've done nice. um for the past eight ten years but um the week that disney let me go i started working in morning television that week so oh, good for you this is my 30th anniversary of disney letting me go and 30th anniversary of being in morning television and just yesterday i was out at the original um location of um in and out burger and we were filming for um kct no ktt one of them i think yeah. kct and okay. um the the guy goes oh it's my 10th year in television i go i'm 30 years <laughs> i didn't me. have gray hair back then <laughs> oh my so. gosh and how can our viewers uh find your new book all uh if you want autographed copies i have them on my website okay but if you uh go other places and you do and there's events that i and i put down the events on facebook and instagram too like okay. tomorrow's going to 10 o'clock 11 o'clock 
at the main library in Santa Monica, but that's how you do it. Great. Well, we we uh, really appreciate you taking the time here at the Hollywood Times dot today, and this will become a YouTube video on our YouTube channel, Hollywood Times Original, and uh, we thank you once again, and just keep on cooking. Thanks thank a you. lot. <laughs> we Take appreciate care. it.